Hi everyone, today I'm doing interview analysis and tie breakdown of Grant Cardone, who is, according to his website, is best-selling author, world's number one sales trainer and renowned speaker. So, uh, let's see. Welcome everyone oh. to the School of Greatness yeah. podcast. We've got Grant Cardone in the house, who is one of my favorite people. Come on, man. Come on, Good man. to see you, man. You know it's mutual. I'm super grateful you're here. We just did a... That's a little awkward. Nobody talks like that. Uh, I feel like it's uh, some kind of uh, prepared cheat that he uses to make other people like him, to make them flattered, to make them like him more. And this kind of tricks uh, usually logics tend to do because uh, ethics, they don't really need them and they can do it naturally. So I think it's indication of logic, but it's a very small one and you know, I could be mistaken. He might have said it for some other reason. Authentically aggressive or something like that. It was yeah, AA, yeah. man. I yeah. said, dude, we're going to an AA meeting, man. We're going to have 12 steps, <laughs> Authentically man. aggressive or something yeah, like that, yeah. 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 And yeah. I think it's just you have... I, like the whole hustle and the grind mm -hmm. thing. And the like, I'm not trying to hustle. I'm not trying to grind. I'm not thinking about, oh, I got to go into freaking beast mode now. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody said yesterday, they said, man, you're the most positive person that I know. And I'm like, dude, really, I'm not really. Let me, let me I'm not really a very positive person. His movements are a little erratic and his speech as well. He is, uh, frequently switches uh, the direction of uh, his, the conversation and he mentioned a lot of different things that seemingly not very connected instead of like following one line and telling one story and focusing on one story. So these all are indicators for me of irrationality. Interesting that he's saying that he is not, he is not positive person. And usually in uh, like this motivational speakers and like all, all the things, uh, they teach you to be like very positive and smiley and all the things. So that's quite interesting. He seems he, he wants to appear as a not positive person and maybe it is what he is. And if that's the case, then he would be a negativist, but it should be confirmed further. I, you know, I don't think good things just happen. I think, I think for me to ever, you know, have a good outcome, I've just had to work really hard, you know, mm -hmm. like I don't get on the front of a magazine easily. Right. I'm going to have to work at that, man. Yeah. That's extroverted logic. You need to work for something to achieve something. And uh, his commitment and the way he behaves is very, uh, like very confident and sort of domineering in a way. So I would say he, ha he has high will. Things go, they just go differently for her. Me. I gotta like you know. I have to push. Mm. Have, to, you ever, have you ever thought about like just taking a step back and letting things come? Yeah, to you? yeah, yeah. I have. What happens when you try to just like I try try for about twenty eight minutes? <laughs> and what happens? And then I get terrified, man. Really? I'm like, dude, you got to get it. You got to get back in the game. Mm. You know, it's like LeBron. Why why does this guy wait? While extroverted sensing is about exerting control, power, danger, and things like that. The pushing things and uh, pushing in life, it really is will. And he appears as a very strong willed person. And if he doesn't do that, as he described, he, is, he starts to <laughs> panic. He, can, he cannot not do that. And uh, that's, this is something that points out to me uh, the very excessive will. He doesn't appear as somebody who just gets uh, unconfident and undecisive and uh, like even on his website he is saying that he is number one he is the best of the best he's number one uh, sales trainer and etc etc all of this is quite descriptive of the first will also notice how in this little fragment uh, he mentioned uh, or talked about introverted intuition three separate times so first he was saying that uh, things for his wife just uh, go in a certain way. When people talk about flow of things, meaning some events that happens in a favorable or unfavorable way, and in this case it's with his wife, it's introverted intuition. And then something very interesting, he says, I tried it for 28 minutes. Uh, man, did you have like a timer set up? <laughs> to measure for how long you tried it or you just have it in your head like the clock in your head so paying extra attention to how much you spend time doing something it would be also introverted intuition and then he says uh, later on that lebron why he waits 
again he pointed out that uh, it's a good moment for uh, LeBron to do something whatever he means so all of this combined tells me that he at least got introverted intuition in values what if you reach your potential would you say well I know I could do more probably yeah. probably I think that's the spiritual mm -hmm. genius of whatever this you know this you know, unspenounce, you know, unidentifiable power in this universe is, mm -hmm. is that like, like people with introverted intuition and values tend to be more spiritual in general than people that don't have any values. But it's important to know that being spiritual is different than being religious. If you are being spiritual only because you're because of religion, you learned it from religion or from parents or from somebody else. If it doesn't come from you, then it uh, doesn't mean introverted intuition. But in his case, I think it's coming from him, the way he brought it up and the way he is uh, talking about some uh, power that he believes exists uh, beyond material world. I just think that the more I get to hang out with you, I really appreciate you. And I'm not trying to like create a love fest here. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But I think that so many people don't understand you. Yeah. And, and, again, and I, we... I've done a bad, terrible job, dude. <laughs> I've done a terrible well, job. Because you're, you're one way online, essentially. You know, you kind of put out this persona that's very aggressive, I would say. Well, look, when I start riffing into a piece of data, yeah. right? So, so uh, when I start saying the, mil the middle class, for instance, mm -hmm. the middle class is different. I like how he is... <laughs> He looks like he almost laying on a bed <laughs> to me. He's like, he's so uh, ma making his body comfortable, so easy, so easy adjusting his position and his shoulders and his body is flexible. And this is uh, great about irrationals that uh, they not only they flexible in their mind, they're flexible with their body as well. But also interesting when Lewis started talking about how people don't understand him and he agrees that he does a terrible job, basically implying that he is not good at forming people's opinion about him. First, he has also this uh, defensive stance when he puts his hand behind his head. It's, uh, I read it as a defensive body language, that it's a sensitive topic for him. But in the same time, he acknowledges that he doesn't know how to do this. And uh, uh, even though he wants to, and he starts to talk in, uh, in his defense right away that uh, all this, um, how I deal with data and this has nothing to do with uh, people's opinion. Like, uh, yeah, okay, he just brought bringing up some facts and some logic, like uh, what his... Uh, process of logical thinking was instead of bringing up why and how people feeling about him and thinking and like uh, he doesn't bring all the ethical stuff that ethics would do and he reacts like logic so another thing for him being logic like every, there's nothing about sale, sales that i liked okay i didn't like talking to people didn't like meeting people didn't like uh get on common ground and i'm th sitting there thinking all the time well and because they teach you all this stuff in sales like mm -hmm. like your first impression is the most important i'm like well then i'm fucked <laughs> because i make a bad first impression almost every time yeah he confirms again that his people skills are weak that he is um <laughs> It's not only about be, being likable. He's saying he didn't even like, he didn't like to meet people, to talk with them. And uh, yeah, of course, ethics also may not like to meet with people, but at least they can, uh, it's much easier for them to understand people and they still will find some common ground if they want to, if it's uh, especially like he's a very dedicated guy. So he would definitely use that. But he doesn't have this in his uh, tools, in his um, like psychic, he doesn't have strong ethics. So that's why he struggled. And this is not only uh, the problem of being ethic or logic, it also has to do with the position of emotion in your psychosophy. And since he got first will, he clearly doesn't have second emotion, so uh, he got other third or fourth emotion. So he got low emotion, which is among other things responsible for emotional interactions with people. Oh, yeah, no doubt about it. Not going big enough was definitely... Early on, you mean? 
Yeah. In terms of what? Not going big enough where? Well, I shouldn't. I, I picked the wrong career to start with. Oh, with cars? Definitely. You know, it, it, the pool wasn't big enough. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to pick something. Looking back, I want to pick something that's got a lot of scale to it. What could it have been? Real estate early on? or Could have been real estate. Could have been Wall Street. Mm-hmm. Could have been. When we're talking about something big, I want something bigger. It wasn't big enough for me. I want something bigger in scale. Uh, Uh, like scale of things I want some global scale I want large scale this all is the language of extroverted sensing as well as always uh, combined with introverted intuition because these aspects they always come together as a values so he is reflecting on his past saying he could have gone bigger so introverted intuition also is there okay that's a big huge problem yeah uh, I'd look at recruiting. I'd look at, uh, I'd probably, if I was coming, like if I died today and could reincarnate tomorrow, I'd come back as a hedge fund guy. Cause I do. I like how he thinks not only in the category of his current life, but in a category of his next life as well. Like he's thinking ahead so much that he even thinks what would he do in, in the next life. So introverted intuition. Cause I do want to make a lot of money. Like, and that's one thing that I've done. I've been done a decent job of making yeah. it clear. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I talk to you, how can we make some money? Man? Come, on, come on, let's make some money. You know? And the reason why I like the money thing is because, and the more I do it, the more I realize, dude, this bugs people bad. It does. It bugs people. Growing out, up, but... I know you were the same way. No one liked to talk about it. You dude, know, don't we talk have, about we it. We didn't have a lot of money and it yeah. was always like, it was just a taboo thing. And, and... Third quadra loves money. Sometimes to extend that money is not only uh, something you use it's it's a goal for what it's frequently being frowned upon and criticized by other quadras but um, it, it it mostly comes just not from understanding of different values it doesn't mean that it's bad sometimes it is bad sometimes this critic is fair but because the sonics is not something that is widespread there is also lack of understanding the topic of money uh getting successful being rich, being wealthy. All these topics are so attractive to a third quadra especially. Of course, they also can be discussed in any quadra and being of interest to any type potentially, but not nearly as much as the for third quadra. Also, of course, it doesn't mean that it's like a rule and applies in every single case and everyone from third quadra are gonna be like that, but uh, this is very, very like close to heart. Like w- when he is saying, "Dude, let's make some money," <laughs> and uh, money, like making money, extroverted logic. And money in this case is interpreted as a resource, a- as a power. That's why you you can never get too much of it. And uh, extroverted logic, extroverted sense in both values of third quadra. So. No, not a surprise that he talks a lot about it. Never got that check. Wow. And I'm so glad I didn't get it. And then I went and took a job that I hated. And hated it, dude. I hated it for two years until I quit fighting it. And I said, I'm going to get good at this job. And then I'm going to leave it. Hmm. I'm going to leave a job I hate. What Another I- great example of first will. I'm going to push no matter what. I hate this job, but I'm going to go. I'm going to get best at it. <laughs> I'm going to get best at it. And then I'm going to quit. And so many people today are unwilling to do that. Like, no, no, I'm not going to do that. You know, look at the actors and actresses in this town that wait for the audition. Mm. Wait for the phone to ring rather than show up cold to an audition and say, I know I'm not on the list. They have to see me. Mm -hmm. Dude, that takes balls. Balls. Big time. Okay. It takes will. That's what I would say. Hi, Will. Always, always finds a way, always uh, kind of pushes through. Like, it, it, it rarely ever gives up. It does give up if it, th- if it thinks that it's totally unwinnable, it may quit. The first will is usually always very, very committed to achieve things and to, do, to get what they want. They are so persistent, well, which is totally makes sense, right? If it's... Uh, Will is their highest, strongest function. That's what they best at. Where are you going? I said, I'm going to Los Angeles. I had this idea that my wife was in Los Angeles. I knew she wasn't there. That's all I knew. Drove up here, had all my stuff in a car, 
had everything else shipped. Didn't know where I was going to stay. Mm. Had no clue where I was going to stay. Never been here. Never met anybody here. Didn't really? know one person here, dude. Didn't make a phone call. Didn't check it out. Didn't even Google it going to Los Angeles. I just follow up, like, I'm going. Mm. And uh, met her the first night I was here. No way. Met her in a uh, in an RV. I like this. There was no logic behind it. He just felt it. He just felt he needs to go. <laughs> he felt that his wife there. So uh, this this tells only one thing. It's introverted intuition. When you have this uh, inner feeling that unexplainable, that yeah, you, you, you want to follow, you need to follow. And the most crazy about it, that he was right. And he arrived to, uh, there and he met her the same day. I mean, how crazy is that? It is very common among introverted intuits to have uh, this kind of stories when they just felt something that they need to do something and be somewhere, even if that, that didn't make any logical sense whatsoever. There is nothing that pushed them towards it. They just felt it. They did it. And some significant change uh, happened in their life. And of course, to do something like that, like on a whim, is uh, very, very spontaneous, very irrational. He didn't do any planning and he didn't want to. He didn't even check anything. And it's not just some trip. He just sold the house, everything, and just went uh, into unknown without uh, any desire like to research it or to plan it so clearly another indication of him being irrational what do you think people struggle with the most in making money is it that i they're think not... they're trying to find what they love you know everybody's going for what they love the love thing this is another misnomer mm -hmm. in our society you made a lot of money doing something you didn't love exactly dude. everybody's like find something you love dude don't take that job go do something you love i'm like you don't even know what you're talking about right oh i don't want to brag again you're talking about yourself the guy's selfish all these people say well i'm an introvert you're selfish man let's call it what it is because when you're talking about your introversion you're assuming no one else is mm. you're saying that it's not easy for anybody like, like, it's not easy for you, but everybody else it is. Everything is about yourself right now when you're saying that. I don't like sales. Selfish. I don't like talking to people. Selfish. I don't like public speaking. You're talking about yourself again, dude. I don't need money. You're, you're selfish, dude. Okay. Being an introvert is not equal to being selfish. I think what's really happening here is that he uh, reflects upon his emotion because he said that he doesn't like to do sales he doesn't like to do pitches he doesn't do what he loves he do what he needs what he thinks that he needs to do and um, an emotional balance your feelings is something that is connected to that because this is uh, where you get satisfaction when you do something you love so if he was communicating with people during sales in the way that he didn't like to or he was uh, like feeling uh, uncomfortable very 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 uncomfortable and uh, things like that and he keeps saying that yeah i i overcame this so that's why uh, to feel something in his words basically selfish and this tells me that uh, this is his third function because first will than to suppress third function because he's talking here about emotion like doing stuff that you love and like not trying to avoid unpleasant situations with uh, interactions with people and uh, this this what points out that this is actually his vulnerable part this is something that he struggles with and there is two ways uh, dealing with this is either you suppress it and then you're not going to be feeling happy you're not going to feel happy if you're going to work on a job that you don't like or do stuff that you don't like like he does and that like he suggests or other way is to understand your weaknesses but understand your potential because third, zo third function is zone of growth of, of potential the biggest potential so if you would do that and you embrace yeah I, I'm weak with that but that's all right everybody got their weak sides I'm gonna I try my best to be better at it, but I'll, I also I don't I'm not gonna squeeze and uh, like deform this function in a such way that is not gonna be healthy or harmonic. Okay, everyone, it's time to wrap it up. What is Grant Cardone's sosonics type? Well, is he logic or ethic? 
Throughout the interview, he demonstrated that he thinks money, he thinks numbers, he thinks uh, productivity, he thinks business, he thinks all the things that are logical, extroverted logic. And uh, on the other hand, with people, he had always bad time uh, understanding other people, uh, getting into, into their heads. As a person with introverted ethics and values, he wasn't bringing up much about relationships or other people or how he feels about them or how uh, what's his attitude towards different things. So this all uh, points out him being logic. Next, is he into it or censor? Well, I would say that he is into it because uh, he, he brought some very bright examples of introverted intuition. He was using it throughout the interview. And even though he was also bringing up some extroverted sensing as well, uh, there was not enough of it. And there was other factors that were ultimately leading to him being into it. So I would say he is into it. Next step, uh, what is his values? The whole interview was primarily based around values of the third quadra, including introverted ethics, which was a little bit here and there. And there was almost no mentioning of values of other quadras. So quite clearly third quadra. And finally, there was a lot of uh, evidence for irrationality as well as negativism, which unlike irrationality, I didn't talk about that much, but uh, there was many, many instances where this was confirmed. So all of this quite well comes down to one particular type, which is intuitive, logical introvert. <laughs> yes, introvert even though he tries to fight it. This, of course, explains by his psychosophy type. So let's get to it. So first, it was a primary focus uh, around him, the whole interview, his first will. First will is, again, very strong, very confident. It's uh, pushing, it's uh, willful, like very strong-willed and it suppresses even other functions, it's so strong. Even though the position of his will was quite easy to determine with other functions, it was a quite different story. So I had to watch a couple other interviews to have uh, more information to go on. And uh, I think that uh, the best bet that his second function is physics, because uh, in, in especially in other interviews, and overall, he is a very energetic guy. He seems like during the interview, he is so much moving around. He seems like he wants to jump out of the chair. That's so much energy he got. As well as when he's talking about the stuff that he is doing, that he is not afraid of either physical or any kind of work. He likes work the most and people who are lazy or who are not so active, uh, he thinks that they are selfish. Also, he showed a lot of interest in a material world as opposed to the world of thought. For example, he prefers to invest only in things that are tangible and uh, that are like, uh, like physical uh, objects, aka houses and stuff like that, real estate. And, uh, and he is against investing in ideas, especially because he doesn't understand them. Also, looking back at many other people with second physics that I analyzed previously, it seems like second physics is especially susceptible to drugs. And this was a huge problem for many years early in his life. So, uh, other thing that he is also... Uh, before he met his wife, he was very uh, sexually active with many women and uh, having like many different partners and being sort of relentless in this. This is also something that would suggest second physics. And if he got second physics, then I think that it's likely leads us to force logic. So why force logic and not third logic? His logic was rather 
fearless in in the statements that he was making he was uh, not afraid to debate certain things and argue on things in in the statements that he was making he was he could say some of the uh, most absurd things that uh, either would look genius or silly depends uh, <laughs> how do you approach them and uh, he didn't really uh, put much explanation in in the things he just so sort of was throwing them out there and saying that yeah people are wrong this is how it should be another argument for him having low logic is that there were some clear logical misconceptions in what he was saying and what's interesting with force logic that in its fearlessness it resembles second logic the most it can say things that are controversial or unpopular and not being afraid of criticism i think as for force logic his logic is rather developed and indeed the position of logic not necessarily means that it's uh, strong or weak and his logic is rather strong but it has uh, char characteristics of the force logic i think he developed his logic a lot through the reading and learning from others plus in the interview he mostly talks on topics that i think he is already pretty well versed in and finally we left with third emotion and this is not easy because i think this is something that he both tries to hide and tries to fight as uh, for example i was talking about earlier i think that third emotion would contribute much more for him uh, hating sales and pitches and uh, that he ha he sees it as a, such a big challenge for himself and that he also th he doesn't feel comfortable not saying everything to people or like lying and for him to be more sensitive in other topics like having only one partner in life this turned out to be a very long video that i spent a lot of time making so i really hope that you guys enjoy please let me know in the comments if you survived watching this long without skipping thank you for watching and see you in the next videos